Hi everyone, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. This is my friend Christina. Yo. Today, we're going to be talking about the gluteal region. Uh, some people have some trepidation about working with the butt, but uh, this is an important area. Your gluteal region connects your legs to your body, it affects your low back, it affects your abdomen, it affects pretty much everything, and yet, a lot of the times we don't even touch it as massage therapists. So let's look at some easy ways of working in this area. First, let's talk about undraping. I like to come at the glutes from both the top down and from the leg up. When I'm coming down from the back and the back is already undraped, maybe I'm working down this side of the body and I feel like moving on to the hip, I'll restrain the drape at around L5 or the sacrum, and then I will fold over, and at this point, you could tuck into the side here, but I usually don't because I'll be working just a little bit under this drape, which we'll see in a second. If I wanted access to the entire uh, hip glute region, I would restrain this folded over drape right around the PSIS. So come around to the side a few inches, out to this lateral sacrum, restrain the drape there, and then fold over again, and then tuck at the inner thigh between the knee and the hip. To undrape from the leg, so let's say that you have the leg undraped already. If I wanted to undrape this further, first I would restrain the drape at this tuck at the inner thigh, and this will allow me to draw the drape medially without the drape getting away from me or creating any sort of draft. From here I can work on most of the hip, I can even work up into the low back if I were to leave this drape up. You can, of course, tuck around to the side if you want to offer a little more security. When I drape in this area, I make sure to do a lot of bunching of the fabric. I'll bunch the fabric up, and then I'll end with a fold. The fold keeps the fabric in place. The bunched up fabric prevents any sort of draft from happening. It creates a very nice thermal barrier. So if I'm working in this area and, think, and her leg's moving, her muscles are moving, there's much less chance of this drape coming undone or sliding off. So let's talk about some relevant landmarks. First, let's find the SI joint. That's the sacroiliac joint. You'll find it if you palpate the ilium, this broad sheet of bone that forms the posterior lateral part of the pelvis. And then you come medial just a bit, you're going to hit this roadblock. This is the edge of the triangular sacrum. A lot of trouble that can happen in the hips, you'll find right along this SI joint. People will report pain right here, and they might report it as low back pain. So when people say, I've got low back pain, ask them to point it out. They may just point out this ridge of bone here. This is a place where trigger points often hide, but if there's any trigger point activity here, I want you to look at all of the things that connect right there at that SI joint. We'll talk about that more in a second. Palpate superiorly and laterally, and you'll feel the iliac crest. This is the outer border of that ilium. And if you don't come all the way up to the iliac crest, you're not going to be getting all of these glute muscles. You're going to be ignoring part of their tendinous attachment. You can indeed feel the top of that ilium, and the top of that ilium is where the QL attaches. So it's just a good site to know in general. If you come around the front far enough, you'll find the ASIS. Down the side here, you'll feel the greater trochanter. You'll feel a knob of bone. You'll know that you're on the greater trochanter if you take this leg and rotate it. If you feel that knob of bone moving under your fingers, then you're on it. Finally, the ischial tuberosity. This is the bone that you sit on. The easiest way to find the ischial tuberosity the first time is to find it on yourself. Sit on a hard wooden chair, and the point where your pelvis makes contact with the chair, that knob of bone, that is the ischial tuberosity. This is the origin site of most of your hamstring muscles. So let's say I'm working on the back, and I've worked my way down the back, and I decide I want to work on the hips. Once I've undraped that, I can work on these hip muscles from the top down. This can be a nice addition to working with this low back because this fascia that forms all this low back, that white gristle that you'll see there, that 
thoracolumbar aponeurosis is continuous with the fascia of the hip. So by working from the low back down, I'm helping to make them aware that these areas are connected. This is also a slightly less invasive feeling way to work with the gluteal region. Now this doesn't give me a lot of access to the SI joint, but I can still work down onto this lateral ilium. And I can make my way past this greater trochanter. And you'll notice that I am going under the drape just a bit, but I make sure to keep the drape somewhat low. If it's getting away from me, I'll resettle it by offering some pressure at the sacrum. But as long as the drape stays close to the skin and I don't go too far under it, then that usually doesn't feel invasive to the client. Everyone's different, so do stay in good communication. Let's work up. So we're going to start the same way. We're going to steamroll our way through this tissue. And you can always apply a little bit of pressure just above that sacrum to keep the drape exactly where it should be. We're going to move into using soft fist. And you can always use a nice reinforced hand. This will apply nice and broad pressure and allow you to work as deeply as you want. And I always recommend working from origin to insertion and beyond. So if you can find a way to extend these moves up above that iliac crest, that will make your moves more effective and it will help integrate this area of the body into the rest of the body. People will start to get an intuitive feel for how this hip region is connected to their low back. You can pair up your fists. And these thumbs aren't doing anything, they're just staying out of the way. Whenever I can, I'm steamrolling up to this SI joint. And then coming up above it into the low back. If I had my, a little bit different draping, let's say that this is my first time seeing this client and I didn't want to make them feel too exposed, we hadn't had enough crucial conversations yet to do that. So if I only had this much undraped, I'll still do my best to get up to that SI joint as often as possible. That will require coming up under the drape just a bit. Just make sure that the drape st stays low and that you're aware of the direction of your hands and fingers. What do I mean by that? I mean, if my fingers are going toward any sensitive areas, the client will know that and they might get a little freaked out. So carve your fingers away from that gluteal cleft so that they never wonder where your fingers will end up. And as you're working, you can always work up past this SI joint. You can always work down from the SI joint. You can always work toward the gluteal cleft. Just never work away from the gluteal cleft. I would never start a move here and end here. That would pull things apart and it wouldn't be fun. So I'm mostly going to come up and around. And I can definitely steamroll downward. Just make sure that you start this near the SI joint or above. And don't start it at the gluteal cleft. If you do start further down toward the gluteal cleft, just make sure to come down 
So we're coming inferiorly instead of straight out. And now that I've done some good steamrolling of this area, let's get into some more specific work. This is where knowledge of those landmarks is going to come in handy. Everything between this SI joint coming all the way down to the coccyx, coming to this greater trochanter, this is all gluteus maximus and the external rotators, also known as the lateral rotators of the hip. So any work that you do between that SI joint and the greater trochanter is going to work on the muscles that are involved in SI joint pain and pain that shoots down the hip. So let's talk about why people would have pain here. We've got these powerful external hip rotators and hip extensors, the ones that bring your knee back, that all attach right here. And these can be overpowering your hip flexors and your internal rotators. Doing a lot of standing all day can result in a lot of tension right here, as can a lot of other activities. This is very common. If the client has pain that shoots down the leg, consider the sciatic nerve. I've got a video on sciatica. If you'd like to see that, you can click in the corner there. The sciatic nerve emerges from the bottom of your spine here, and it comes together, and then it passes here. It passes between your greater trochanter and your ischial tuberosity. So this can get clamped by all of these external rotators. So if we can get these to calm down, then some of those shooting symptoms can go away. So I'm going to continue with some steam rolling out transversely. I'm following the direction of these rotators. A good tool for this area is the carving knuckles. So these are my proximal metacarpophalangeal joints. I'm forming a straight line with my hand and as straight a line as possible with my wrist. That allows me to let my weight do this work. You can use paired up carving knuckles and do some spreading. And this is an excellent way of finding and working on trigger points. If there are trigger points to be found in this rotator region, you'll find quite a few in the bellies of the muscle right here. So pretty much in the very middle between the greater trochanter and the SI joint, you'll also find quite a few up toward the SI joint itself. I do ask that you consider these muscles rather than just this attachment site. If they have pain here, there's something wrong. There's something going on here. So steamroll out those areas. If I were to just focus on that SI joint, I might just cause more pain. Let's come up along this iliac crest here. As we come out anteriorly just a bit, we're getting into the gluteus medius and minimus region. To find gluteus medius and minimus, find that iliac crest, find the greater trochanter, and everything between there, you'll find a nice little valley full of muscle. And this is where you'll find gluteus medius. Gluteus minimus lies underneath it. If you're working on gluteus medius, you're probably working on gluteus minimus. This is going to be an area where people won't realize they have tension. And it can be quite tender in some people. This is very active when people are just standing, and very active in walking. But I bet just about any desk worker that you work on will have some tension here as well. If there's high tone right here in this gluteus medius and minimus region, that easily translates into pain in the low back. You'll find trigger points here in this belly of the muscle. You might also find some along the iliac crest up here, but that can be very tender to work with. I recommend focusing more on this belly of the muscle. You'll get more bang for your buck and you're less likely to cause any pain the next day.
Now if I want to take this work a step further, I'll redrape, and then I'll pluck up the ankle. And now I can work along this SI joint as I bring the hip into internal rotation. You can tell that this is internal rotation if you look at the knee. The knee is turning inward. Think about what this is doing to this greater trochanter. It's rotating it outward and causing all of these muscles to lengthen. So this is affecting the length of gluteus maximus and of all of those external rotators like piriformis and quadratus femoris and all of their friends. I can work all the way up this SI joint and then into the iliac crest. Now this isn't, what I'm doing with this leg here isn't lengthening the gluteus medius and minimus, but it is changing the shape of that muscle. Anything that I do to rotate the femur is going to change the shape of that very short muscle, including bringing the leg over. So look at the kneecap, this is external rotation. And now I can continue doing some compression or some trigger point work up around this iliac crest. You can also work along this SI joint again. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of soft muscle under your palm here. That's because bringing the leg into this external rotation shortens all of those external rotators. So now you might be able to, to apply some pressure that you weren't able to before. I find that working with a lot of different angles and uh, working with these muscles and attachment sites in a lot of different ways gets me better results than just trying the same thing over and over again. A couple more techniques. You can rest their leg in the crook of your arm. So just so that you can see the knee here, I'm raising up with this outside hand, bringing my inside hand under the knee, and now this low leg rests along my forearm, kind of sitting in this crook of my elbow. And now I can extend this hip as I bend. So just by shifting my body weight, I can bring this hip into extension. This is also going to soften these posterior pelvis muscles allowing you to do some work that you otherwise couldn't do. And it also gives you some interesting leverage. This can be very nice for people with uh, short or hypertonic uh, iliopsoas muscles that you've already been working on, and if you'd like to give them a stretch while working on their antagonists, this is a good way of going about it. Just let most of this come from the movement of your body. Another trick, so make sure that the upper leg is draped for this because we're going to be moving this leg out and we don't want there to be a draft. With this outer hand, reach to this inner knee, pull outward as you rotate this leg outward. So this puts the hip at a completely new angle. These external rotators are going to be very short and slack now and they're also going to be at a different angle than they were before. Their relationship to the hip is going to be different. You can choose to bring the leg even further into abduction, and again, that's going to change those angles. And you can use your leg to press into their knee, be gentle with this, and that's going to press the head of the femur into that acetabulum. If you're having trouble working with these muscles, sometimes offering some compression up into the acetabulum can reduce spasm and reduce tone. And then you can do some work that you otherwise couldn't do. Okay, let me know how this goes. Hit me up in the comments, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.